Our next guest has uh, sold, uh, this is just crazy, 100 million uh, record albums. He's a founding member of the legendary rock and roll band The Who, and he recounts his storied life and career in uh, this acclaimed new autobiography entitled Who I Am. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the program, Pete Townsend. Pete? <laughs> Nice to see you. Look at the uh, information here. You and I both have uh, tinnitus or tinnitus. Yeah. How do you pronounce it? Tinnitus. Tinnitus. Yeah. Describe for people who may not know what this is. It's uh, ringing in the ear that you get when you've been exposed to very loud noise, but you can get it from other things as well. It can be a congenital thing, which means that you just get it because your parents had it mm -hmm. or whatever. It's, and it, it's a, something to do with the, the nerve, the fiber endings in your ears are vibrating Yeah, you constantly. know, right now, Dave, I, I don't have it badly. I, I, I have done quite a lot of new age medicine stuff to kind of help me, and uh, a homeopathic uh, teacher, a homeopathic doctor helped me a lot with this, so I would recommend that if you have it. Do you remember the first time you noticed it? Because the first time I noticed I had it, it was quite alarming, because you think, oh... There's an appliance making a noise, and you, I walked through the house listening to anything that was, was plugged in, and then I realized, oh, it's something that's not plugged in. It's your head. Well, you know, for me, it started in, in a delightful way. I used to wake up in the morning. <laughs> I think, I can hear the birds singing. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been able to hear the birds singing. <laughs> now I can hear the birds singing. <laughs> yeah. And I'm in a dungeon. And I can still hear the birds singing. It started with kind of peeps and whistles and beeps, so it was very much like birds singing. But of course, it wasn't helped by, by, by the fact that, you know, when I wrote songs, I would be at home and um, I would wear earphones and, um, you know, write a really good hit song. And I'd go down and say to my wife, you know, I've written a hit, I've written a hit. And she'd say, oh, this lovely darling, I'm just <laughs> bathing the children. And, and I'd go back up and I'd get my brandy bottle and I'd drink the bottle and put the earphones on and go, it's a hit, it's a hit, it's a hit, louder, more brandy, louder, louder. <laughs> and, um, and then they wake up the next day and wonder why I couldn't hear anything. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think your uh, pursuit as a uh, rock and roll uh, singer, uh, songwriter, performer had anything to do with this? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. On stage? <laughs> on, on stage, yeah. the Who weren't as loud as they were out front. You know, the legend has it that we were one of the loudest bands in the world uh, out front. And uh, people often come up and blame me for the fact that they're deaf. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and um, I'm, uh, you know, I have to be very careful to, to accept any liability because, you know, my insurers would, uh, yeah. would bark loudly. No, the, 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 the worst thing that ever happened to me was, of course, the Smothers Brothers show where uh, Keith Moon went into league with this, this guy who was a backstage guy who's, who'd just been sacked from the show and uh, he was a special effects guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Keith said, I want my bass drum to explode when we play My Generation. And um, this guy said, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> How big do you want it to be? And Keith went, ooh. You know, Keith's one of those guys that when he first heard, according to my friend Tom Wright, when Tom Wright explained super glue to Keith Moon, Keith Moon went, Super glue. <laughs> and the next day, in the, his hotel room, all the furniture was stuck <laughs> to the ceiling. <laughs> That's what it's for, for God's sake. Now, that is genius. That's what it used to be, really strong. <laughs> anyway, so, so, so he, this guy who's got a chip on his shoulder against whoever it was that ran the Smothers Brothers show packed this cannon with extra extra explosive and it just so happened when that explosion went off I was standing right in front of the drum and it went off with a big bang and I was deaf for about a month but you know what really worried me is the back of my hair caught fire <laughs> and in those days I had a good hair and and I was pretty keen on having good hair because it you know it, it kind of it was what we did in those days and it was all gone yeah. it was just gone <laughs> ah, ah! <laughs> 
<laughs> and you could see me on the TV show, kind of going, oh, oh. And, and Tommy Smothers and I had agreed that I was going to smash his guitar. Uh -huh. I was going to rip it from him and smash <laughs> sure, it up. Sure, sure. And I was just so incoherent, but worried about my hair. Sure. I, I couldn't do it. Forget that you were deaf. It was your hair you were concerned about. <laughs> Uh, now, when, when we come back, uh, let's talk about the uh, smashing of the guitar and then also uh, kind of this deal. You know what I'm talking about? I do, yes. Yeah, okay, does that ring a bell? <laughs> okay. we'll, be, we'll be right back with Pete Townsend, everybody. Catch tomorrow's Late Show with Dave's guests, Amy Poehler, Josh Hutchison, Tegan and Sarah. And a special top ten list presented by NASCAR champion Brad Kozlowski. The mayor's fund to advance New York City is providing relief to city residents who are affected by Hurricane Sandy. You can help. Visit nyc.gov slash fund to make a donation. Thank you. When you, um, when your band, um, you came from a, um, uh, a generation, a loosely uh, applied use of the word, a generation of the great British uh, rock and roll bands, uh, uh, and among them uh, the Rolling Stones, uh, the, the Kinks, and Paul would be able to uh, fill in a hundred other blanks. You, you guys must have fed off each other's energy or, or knew that you were onto something or... or uh, it was symbiotic in a way, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And, and the Stones' first shows were in the neighborhood Ealing, where I lived, where I grew up, where my father took, decided to have his home and where his parents lived. There was a, uh, an art school there where I went to college, and we heard rumors about this band that played in a place called the Ealing Club, which was where this guy, Alexis Corner, started the rhythm and blues um, scene in London and a couple of the guys in the Stones used to go and play with Alexis Corner and Cyril Davis, two real extraordinary early musicians of, of, of that era, probably 50s rather than 60s. And uh, so we were, and you know, a couple of the guys in the Stones were at Art College, uh, Ray Davis from the Kinks was at Hornsey Art College. We were all listening to the same music but we were also subject to the same semi kind of revolutionary stuff this idea that you know post vietnam post cold war or in the middle of the cold war uh, that, it, that we needed to change the way that we entertained ourselves, the way that we communicated with each other and the way that we represented ourselves to our future fans and this came, I believe, uh, from uh, Keith Richards, something that you saw him doing, is that right? Yeah, backstage? We, we, we were a little band, we were a little R&B band, I was probably still at art college, and we supported the Stones on two shows. They were brand new, they were young, they had one hit with a Chuck Berry song called Come On, and uh, watching them, met them first backstage, they were all very charming. It, uh, as the curtain opened, Keith Richards is kind of doing this. He's kind of going, ah, oh, you know, ah. Oh. I'm thinking, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> and, and as the curtains open, his first chord is, so I, I thought it was part of his thing. Yeah. Anyway, a couple of weeks later, we support them again at a little club out in, in, in South London. And I watch him carefully waiting, and he doesn't do it. So I go up to him afterwards and I say, Keith, you didn't do your arm swing thing. And he went, what? I said, you know, that kind of windmilly thing, you know, your thing. And he went, I can't tell you what he said. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm Keith Richards, do you really think I'm going to do ballet? And um, was the inference. So I picked it up. And I, I uh, was inspired by, by Keith Richards in many ways. One, one wonders how many questions Keith Richards has answered with the question, what? <laughs> 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 uh, and then... And then a little more demonstrative, uh, 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 killing the guitar, uh, setting it on fire, and, and uh, that, that was the, the, the uh, genesis for the Keith Moon drum kit uh, explosion. That's what, right. Wh where, where did the guitar... You what know, is that, that, came, that came from a very... You know, people don't believe me. This came from art school. It was, a, it was an artistic act. And if I ever did it today, it would be... We did it once, right here on the floor. I took this beautiful guitar, do you remember? It was worth 
ten thousand dollars. I smashed oh, it, yeah, yeah, and we yeah, auctioned yeah, yeah. it for seventy-five thousand the next day. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was art, you know, for me. Well, it's one of those times. It's, uh, it's like, uh, I don't know, it was like Paris before the war or something. <laughs> it was uh, great, great music, and uh, with every great piece of music, uh, great, great stories. Uh, about the the folks who who made up the uh, the movement that came out of Great Britain, and uh, this is certainly one of those gentlemen right here, Pete Townsend, ladies and gentlemen. Who I am. My pleasure to see you again. Thank you very much. We'll be right back with Philip Phillips, everybody.